Hey guys. How many of you think you can do this? How many honestly think you can do this? All right, how many of you think you can't do it? Why? Why? Because you have it, right? I bought my first unicycle when I couldn't ride. I paid $250 to have a unicycle that I couldn't ride, right? What we're going to be talking about today is robots. And we're also going to be talking about, I want to, I want to leave you with the, the, the idea that you actually have a chance at doing something like that with what you have now. Right? None, none, of you believe, none of you believe that you can actually do that. I think every one of you can do that. You know, it took me about four years to be able to ride a unicycle, and then when I bought that, I was just able to hop right up on it. I, I'm not very balanced, I'm not very coordinated, but it just took a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. Actually, a lot of time. And I didn't want to get, I didn't want to quit. My brother, my brother started riding before I did, and um, truth be told, he wasn't going to ride a unicycle, and me not. So. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. OK, so what we're talking about is connecting the dream. Like we all have dreams, right? How many people have dreams? How many people want to do something? How many people want to go to space when they grow up? How many people want to ride horses professionally? How many people want to fly planes? How many people want to ride unicycles? Right? We all have dreams, like, right? <laughs> that make people want to do stuff, right? We all have dreams. And so what we're talking about today is connecting the dreams, and we're doing that by talking about robots. Now, how many people play Nintendo? All right, how many people build stuff? All right, so we want to make, we want to bring from kind of this place where we're thinking about what it takes to do what I want to what it takes to do what it is that I want to do, right? That's like, that's like a big problem. That's like a big problem. And we're talking about robots today to do that. Because a lot of times, we, I know what I want. It says, there's somebody famous said, great men fail when they trade what they really want for what they want right now, right? Oh, that's tough, right? Oh, I want it right now. But really, what I really want doesn't come right now. That's what we're talking about today. And we're talking about it in the context of engineering and technicians. Like, what's the difference between being an engineer and being a technician, right? Because I'm an engineer. And there are technicians here. Uh, uh, Ron is here. And he, you're going to be with Ron in about a month. And, th and they're going to tell you more about what it means to be a technician and more about what it means to means to build stuff. Well, I'm, t I'm also going to tell you about what it means to build stuff. We're going to build some stuff today, but I want to tell you about what it means to build robots as an engineer as well. So it says, it says people perish for lack of a vision, so I want to give you that vision today. And the vision is that you, each one of you guys, is created to create. Like, I believe that. And if you don't believe that, come and talk to me later, and I'll make you really good proof. But today, that's just going to be something that we're just going to stand on, and we're going to work through that and walk out what it means to be created to create. So, and it's really possible for you to be a rocket scientist, just like it's possible for you to ride a unicycle. That's, that's, my, that's my claim here. So there's a dream. Here's a reality. Don't lose the vision. That's, don't lose the vision. And what does it take not to do, not to lose the vision? So the dream from reality, you connect them. And I want, you to think about, I want you to think about a robot. When you think about a robot, what do you think about? What a few answers. A rover? OK, what else? What do you think about, a ro what do you think about when you think about robots? Wally? -E? <laughs> I love it. I love, I love dumpster diving. <laughs> and Wally's a movie about a robot that dumpster dives. It's my favorite movie. <laughs> What else? What do you think about? All right, now when you think about building a robot, what about building a robot? What do you think about? Move to 
pick up stuff. Well, did, how many of you saw Iron Man? Right? Remember, remember his interface? Remember how he was building robots? I think, uh, I think I'm getting a lot of static here. I think I'm going to, give me a second. Good to have backups, right? <laughs> Remember this scene? This, he's sitting in his he's sitting in his garage. He's got a user interface. He's looking at stuff, and he's designing. Look at that tool he's got. How would you like to build robots like that? He's doing designs. He can get into his design. He can see the pieces and the parts. How cool would that? How many of you play with Legos? Right? How cool would it be to build your Lego design like this? Right? Where you can get inside it and look at it and think about it and understand pieces of how those Legos go together before you, before you build the blocks. And he's making a suit, a robot that he gets in. Right? It's his Iron Man suit. Right? What do you think about that interface? Do you think we have that today? No. We don't have that today. I'm an engineer. I'm a mechanical engineer. I design things for a living. I don't have tools like that. But I do work at a place. We are the finest, most accomplished space agency in the world. We've done more in space than any other group of people on the planet in history, in space. And here's a robot that actually went to space. This one's on the International Space Station now. The way we actually build robots, after we get through an advertisement for five seconds from IBM. <laughs> these guys, these guys want to build tools. There's a lot of people out there that want to build tools, and they care about it enough that they'll put an advertisement between us and the video we want to see, right? We care about that. Like, we care about having tools. These guys are packing up a robot. This is not building the robot. This is packing the robot. This is the equivalent of gift wrapping at Christmas time to put a robot in space. You see all those people? You see how many people are standing watching, how many people are doing stuff? Everybody there has a job. I'm going to show you later what it looks like to walk through a flight integration process one of, one on my rocket that I worked on. But that, that's not the way, that, you know, that is not this, Right? It's a very, very different world. And so we, what we want to do is we want to take them and we want, to connect, we want to connect what it means to build robots the way we want to with what we actually have right now, right? Okay? That's, that's where we're going. Just, all right. And stop me if you have questions. I'm, I'm, I'm here for questions. I love questions. What you got? We'll get right to that. Um, the, the Robonaut... Ro Robonaut is a replacement, a human replacement. So we can take, can you pick up your Rubik's Cube? Can you solve the Rubik's Cube? How? With algorithms. I don't know those algorithms. I can't solve it, but you can. Now, if I give you a robotic hand, could you solve it? If I give you a robot hand that you can tell it exactly what to do, can you solve it? Okay. Please don't get up, but can you solve it now? Right, because you don't have it, right? So what, th so what Robonaut's designed to do is to take your hands and put this 30, you know, 150 miles up, spinning around the earth at 36,000 miles an hour. And when it's going that fast, that far away, you can still solve your Rubik's Cube. Yeah, <laughs> that's, what Robo, that's, what Robo, that's what we want Robonaut to do. Because really when you go to space, everything's a big old puzzle. There's, so when we think about robots, there's actually four parts of a robot. You can't find a Webster's Dex, Dex, a Webster's Dictionary definition of what a robot is, but I have one as working for robot with robots for four years. This is the way I think about robots, and I hope you'll think about it this way too. One is that there's, there's a processor. There's some thinking capacity. One, there's a mechanism. There's some instantiation is a fancy word for meaning put inside of. There's some mechanism that the robot lives in as far as its body, how it moves. And then there's an algorithm. Here's your algorithm for being able to solve this Rubik's Cube, right? I, I don't know the algorithm, but 
you know, we might have a robot that does, or we might just grab a friend who can solve it for us. And then there's a sensor. There's some way that the robot feels and interfaces with the world around it. And the truth about it is it's messy. That's the robot I worked on. It's not really looking like a robot right now. But uh, <laughs> and right at that point, it was, it, was a, it was a mess. It was a real mess. So when we're, when we're thinking about robots, I just want to go through and talk about robots. This is a hero shot for a robot. This is a robot in Afghanistan being blown up by an improvised explosive device, an IED. All right, my fiance is in Afghanistan right now. Okay, so this is a hero shot for me. When I see a robot being blown up <laughs> and not a person, that's exciting. That's really, really, really exciting. So robots can do things. They can go places. They can m make things possible that we can't do. That we just can't do them. Go in and get people, rescue, pull them around. That's, that's, a, that's one of the robots, a little pack bot from iRobot. You, how many of you have a Roomba? How many of you have, how many of you have seen a Roomba? Right? The guys who make Roomba make this guy too. And this guy is saving lives ac across the planet walking through pipes. Now, medical, medical robots, there's robots that go in and will do surgery on you. They'll walk, through, walk, you, they'll walk into your body and they'll do stuff and fix you inside your body where human hands can't go. That's cool, if you ask me. That's really cool. Also, prosthetics. Prosthetics is a robot that snaps onto a person when we lose a limb or something, some injury that we've had, we've lost a limb, and these prosthetics can allow us to do things. Look down here in the corner. This guy has a fake arm, and he's now allowed to do things that he couldn't do before. So he can solve a Rubik's Cube when he, it was, you could put that Rubik's Cube right in front of him and he couldn't solve it, right? But you give him an arm and all of a sudden he's got a robot on him that he can do that. Every one of your cars, have you, how many of you have driven in a car? <laughs> how many of you think that people built that? How many of you think that robots built that, <laughs> right? Like everything we have is built by robots. Like it's iRobot is not a joke, it's real. Everything we have is built by robots. Not everything, but almost everything. This microphone, this handheld, probably even these tables, you know? So robots, packing robots, driving robots. Here's what robots see when they drive down the roads. Competition robots. This is Julia Thompson. She was one of my mentees. Also, her brother and her dad are here. Her sister and her dad are here with the Twisted Bots. So be sure to check, out, check them out later. Lego robots. And whoa, 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 whoa. But NASA. What does NASA do for robots, right? Well, we do. That's my robot. That's the, that's the, sweet, that's the cutest robot in my book. And I spent four, three years of my life building that robot. There's another one called K10. K10 is a robot that they built just like my robot, except they did it a lot better, and I'm happy for them because I can't build K10 right now. This is Chariot. It's a, uh, a mobile unit that we can, it's a, it's a robot that you drive on, and we want to take it to another planet and drive around. This is uh, Athlete. Athlete is an eight-legged robot with joints and wheels and drives around and can pick up containers and move stuff. And the idea is that we can send this, this logistics thing to another planet and do cool stuff with it. Uh, we all know about, we all know about the harsh environments of Mars and spirit and opportunity, right? Those guys, those guys are out there doing their thing and d driving around on Mars. Well, what about this one? Now, now wait a second, you start thinking about robots, right? They start getting weird. This is Canada Arm 2. <laughs> this is like a worm that crawls around, like an inchworm that crawls around the International Space Station and can do stuff outside when the guys are staying inside. You know, when our astronauts, men and women inside the space station are driving this arm, or even from down here, we're driving this arm up in space. Um, and this is Dexter. <laughs> they get more and more freaky. The robots just get really, really strange. Dexter's actually up on the space station now, also made by the same guys who made Canada Arm 2. And uh, Dexter's up on the space station, and it's just like, it's, it's like a, kind of like a spidery looking weird thing that can go outside and do stuff that astronauts don't have to. So Robonaut, this is Robonaut. He's a human replacement. It's the idea is that we can build hands, joints, things like that, pack him up, put him in space, he went up there on the space space shuttle. I think space shuttle, shuttle Endeavor went to uh, he's put put um, Robonaut on orbit. I think with Expedition 14 to the International Space Station. Might be 15. I might get confused there. Here's how Robonaut arrived at the space station. And face to face, here we are, robots to astronauts. Right? Airplanes are not going to be flown by pilots. The missions that we do to space are not going to be done by people. The airplanes. You're going to get on an airliner within our lifetime, my lifetime. You know, we're going to get on an airliner with nobody in the front seat. <laughs> How cool is that, right? <laughs> it's going to happen. Did you see the car that I just showed you? That was a Google car, and you saw the way Google saw the Earth, right? Like when Google, when the Google car drives around, it sees the world as a bunch of sensor inputs, and it drives on its own. You're going to get in a car, and the car's going to drive you where you're going to go, and there's not going to be a driver in the front seat. Not necessarily. But that's where we're going. Like, that's not a question. So toe-to-toe -to -toe astronauts with robots, here we go. Now let's just, I want to take a minute, 
and, and bring it back to reality, bring it back. Okay, this was the Haiti, you remember the earthquake in Haiti about a year ago with all the construction, they didn't think about earthquakes in Haiti? That's what it looked like after, I think it was like, you know, 10 minutes of earthquake and everything was broken. Thousands and thousands of people died. All right, these robots went in there. They, they took robots down there and these robots can go in and find people, can go in and do stuff. Like, they're real, they're active. But I want to take a tour through what, where robots go. And I want to start by looking at, this is a satellite image. We can see the bottom of the ocean. So this is, we want to go, we want to look at where robots can go that we can't. Here's another picture from the bottom of the ocean taken by a robot. This is under, that's under the South Pole. This is a reef off, uh, I think this is a reef in the Caribbean. Let me find out how I'm doing on time. This is a, this is a uh, robot. These are a couple robots that go down and take underwater pictures. This guy's driving around on the bottom of the ocean. This guy goes deeper. This guy goes even deeper looking for wrecks. This is a, uh, a vent on the bottom of the ocean north of, uh, um, uh, north of Iceland. There's these vents on the bottom of the ocean. There's this stuff that lives without sunlight. It's really kind of creepy, but we can send robots down there and look at it. Robots that look like that. How many of you know that ice is kind of melting? How many of you are worried about it? Okay, now how do you know to be worried about it? Have you seen it? No. Have I? No. But I believe that ice is melting. Don't we all believe that ice is melting? How do we know that? Robots saw it. <laughs> That's it. That's taken from a robot. <laughs> right? These pictures are taken from robots, and those robots, we call them satellites. But these things are, right, we're gonna, the, the algorithm that we need to solve the problem is much bigger, and we're going to chuck this up 150 miles above the Earth and have it flying around at 36,000 miles an hour, and we're going to be able to solve that problem way up in space, right? Thanks for that Rubik's Cube. That's really, I like that. <laughs> um, so, but we don't want to do, do it just by sending it out there, so we have space shuttles and different kinds of things to take us on to on orbit to do that. There's another robot. I think this is light. No, not light. I forget which one this is. This is a robot that's about to be released from the space shuttle. Um, here's, a, here's another robot. This guy takes off and lands. It's a mini space shuttle that the Air Force has. How many of you thought that we didn't have a space shuttle? Y'all know about the space shuttle? That it retired? The big one? How many of you knew that we still have a space shuttle? Two, three, maybe four. I don't have any idea how many space shuttles we have. We've got a lot of space shuttles. <laughs> they look like that. I don't even know the name of it. The Air Force has it. <laughs> like, right? But we seriously, we still have a space shuttle. There's more stuff going up to space and coming down right now than you ever know. Just like the way that you don't know that your cars are built by robots, or you don't know that this, this table was built by robots, there's stuff going on all over the world done by robots, and it happens right in front of our eyes, and we don't even notice it. This is a space shuttle, a robotic space shuttle that goes to space. For all we know, we could be stealing Chinese satellites, you know? It's like, <laughs> like, it's like you can go up there, snatch something, and bring it down. <clears throat> all right, the Weather Channel. How many of you know about the Weather Channel? Brought to you by robots. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> all these pictures, all this data that we get for the Weather Channel is all robots, right? There's an A-train, so we got to know how to take that pictures, take that data, and actually make sense of it. And so there's robots that take the data to give you the weather right now, but there's also, this is called the A-train. There's a bunch of satellites where we try and figure out what in the world the atmosphere is doing. So this is the A-train. There's, there's a bunch of different satellites, Aqua and Ceres and Calypso and Glory. And actually, Glory didn't make it. Glory crashed. Um, no, right? Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> it's, it's when, when a satellite goes up and it doesn't go up, that's really bad. Um, it, was not, it was not a good day. Um, CloudSat, OCO2, like these, these, are, these, are, these are what they call the A-train. So this is our, these are like the development robots that NASA builds to understand how we can make the, the Weather Channel better. Satellites, satellites, satellites. Whoa, okay, so let's think for a minute. Now we've got these satellites in orbit, and we want to do something new. We want to try something new. We want to come up with something new. So the way we do it is we test it, right? So these satellites here, this is two satellites um, that, the, that uh, DARPA, it's another agency kind of like NASA, but they focus more on doing stuff than finding out what the world, how the world works. We focus on how the world works. DARPA is focused on how do we do stuff better. So these are DARPA satellites. And uh, these, these two guys were an automated docking and rendezvous experiment that they did about four, four years ago, three years ago, or something like that. Um, but when you start thinking about this sort of stuff, and you start thinking about doing technology demonstration, and we start thinking about going to Mars, that's when we start thinking about, okay, okay, now I'm getting it. It's not just technology. It's not just the Weather Channel. It's why, like, I'm a, I'm, I'm, if I'm created to create, and the best thing I can do is find out what in the world is out there in this creation, right? Like, what in the world is out there? Oh, actually, I mean, what isn't in the world that's out there, right? So I want to be looking at how I can get to this place and be able to look and see 
every part of that thing because that thing is really, really far away. Really, really far away. How many, so, so the Earth is 93 million miles away from the sun. We call that one astronomical unit. This, the Mars is 1.27 astronomical units. So at some times, sometimes, the Mars can be three times the distance from the Earth than the sun. So when, when we're here and Mars is all the way on, we call it opposition, for a fancy word, when Mars is in opposition of the sun, that they can be almost three times away the distance from the Earth. And we want to go there and we want to have a robot driving around, right? We're not talking 150 miles up now. You know, we're not talking about a 150 mile toss up and then have it just zipping around the Earth. We're talking about 300 million miles away. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how to deal with that number. If you do, come help me. 300 million miles away on this other planet, spinning around another hot ball of gas is flying through space faster than we can fathom. <laughs> and we want to send something. We have the audacity to believe that we can send something there and still have it controlled and still have it do what we want. So let's think about Mars. How are we going to get there? We know about satellites, right? What you got? A rocket ship. Well, we got to have, we got to have something to send there first, right? We do need a rocket ship. So we've got, we've got satellites. These are, Mars. This is the, these are the satellites that are flying around Mars, just like GPS satellites, just like XM radio, just like t your TV channels. These are the satellites that are around Mars right now. Uh, Mars Global Surveyor, Mars Express, Mars Odyssey, and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. These guys are taking really, really good pictures of Mars. There's also two lander, there's also a, a polar, the Phoenix lander lasted for a little while, lasted for about uh, three months while it did its mission on the North Pole of Mars. And then the Spirit and Opportunity, are the two partner robots that have been down there for a while. And then we've got the Mars Science Lab, which has just landed. Yes, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And my job in this picture is to figure out how we can get there better. So we're going to talk about that in a minute. So what does Mars look like? And we want to take a look at it with robot eyes first. So here's a Mars sunset. Here's, here's a terrain that was taken from one of those satellites. Here's a top-down view. We can, see the, you know, we can see where the ancient sea used to be and where the highlands and where the canyons are. The more, canyon, more canyon details, stuff like this. This is all taken from space. These are, these are taken from space to, on Mars. So we think about Mars as not being space, but Mars is just, it's, it's just like here, except not at all, right? <laughs> and it doesn't look the same, and we want to know what it looks like, right? So we send robots there to find out what it looks like. Here's the tallest mountain that we know of in the solar system. It's called Olympus Mons. It's four, or four or six times taller than Mount Everest, okay? It's a... <clears throat> really, really, really tall. It's a giant volcano on Mars. And we know what it looks like because of robots. What about dust devils? Did you know that there's tornadoes and dust devils on Mars? And water? There's liquid water on Mars? This was a lake that they took a picture of because we have satellites flying around Mars? <laughs> what are y'all laughing at? Oh, hey, Marvin's here. Hey. <laughs> we, we haven't found Marvin on Mars yet, but we like Marvin nonetheless. So, so when we think about driving, this is a uh, Spirit, this is a spirit or opportunity driving off of its platform. This is, this is uh, uh, Mars Global Surveyor getting sent to Mars. Here's a picture that uh, Spirit took. Here's a dust devil zipping across Mars. Like, seriously, like, how crazy is this? 300 million miles away and we can see whirlybirds, like uh, swirling dust devils on Mars, right? That's pretty crazy. Digging on the North Pole, we found water ice on the North Pole. Here's the Phoenix Lander, an artist's rendition of the Phoenix Lander. Here is the Phoenix Lander falling to Mars in front of a crater. This is taken from, this is robots looking at robots. That's pretty cool. All right, now let's go back and think about how do we get there. All right, here's, here's so we want to go from Mars Science Lab to Mars Science Lab. All right, that's a big robot. I don't know about you, but I think that's a big robot. And it's on Mars. This is just part of it. We have a cruise stage, a back shell, a, ro a rocket, a thing that, the, the actual robot and a heat shield. That's the heat shield. It was built here at Na the, the instrumentation was built here at Langley. That's the robot. That's the, that's the rockets. That's the rockets being mounted to the robot. That's the whole thing being assembled, and that's it ready to go, to, ready to go up there. On the, on the, that's it ready to go on the launch vehicle. When we go to put it on the launch vehicle, we put it up on top of a big stack. We put, this, we put these clamshells around it. We call there's a fairing. We put a boost stage and a bigger, a bigger piece on the back and more of these boost rockets around the back. That's what it looks like when it's going together. 